In this video, I want to do a distance, rate, and time problem. So, remember, or, um, or I don't know, maybe this is the first time you've seen it. Um, we define distance to equal rate times time, right? I mean, if you go 60 miles an hour for three hours, you've gone 180 miles. Um, so we short, write it shorthand as d equals r times t. Equivalently, you can solve for r t just by dividing, and I've divided both sides by r to get t equals d over r, because I'm going to use that in my problem. Okay, so this is going to be the problem for us here. It says that the speed of a boat in still water is 10 miles per hour. Um, it says the boat's going to travel 24 miles upstream and then 24 miles downstream in a total of five hours. Um, and in this situation, the boat's going to be in a little stream, so it's fighting against a current, or it's in the river or wherever it is. Okay, so it's not going to go just 10 miles an hour. It's going to go 10 mile. It's going to go less than 10 miles an hour when the boat's moving against the current, and then when it has the current pushing it, it'll go 10 miles an hour plus whatever the current is. Okay, so let's see if we can't use this information to try to set up some stuff here. Okay, so let's think about it. So, so here's my bad little river. So at first the boat is going against the current. So let's suppose the current is again moving to the left and we've got our little boat and it's going to the right. Okay, so if the boat's moving against the current, what do we know in this case? Well, we know for this situation, we know that the distance it travels is 24 miles, because that's how far it goes upstream. Its time, we don't know. So we'll just label it generically as T1. Okay, it's some time. Okay, we're not quite sure what it is. The rate that the boat moves at, it's going to be the original 10 miles an hour that it goes in still water, but since the current is pressing against the boat, we'll subtract away the speed of the current. Okay, well in the other situation, when the boat is actually turned around and then it's going back downstream, well in that case what's going to happen? Well, we still know that the distance is equal to 24. Okay, we know that the time on the second part of the journey, well, we don't really know. We'll call that something different, T2. And we know that the rate of the boat this time, since it goes 10 miles an hour normally, well, we'll add the speed of the current, because now that the current is pushing against the boat, so it'll be going faster as it moves left to right. Okay, so what do we know? Well, we know that the total time is 5 hours. Well, we can set that up as an equation by saying T1, that was the time to go upstream, plus T2, that's the time it takes to go downstream. That'll equal um, 5 hours. Okay, if we use the original equation I had, remember at the very beginning I wrote that since distance equals rate times time, we can write time as distance divided by the rate. Okay, so that's what I'm going to use in both of these cases, or, or this problem. So it says T1 would be the first distance divided by the first rate. T2 would be the second distance divided by the second rate. And again, we know that equals 5 total. Well, again, if I plug in my information here now, we know that the first, what the first distance was, it was 24. The rate over that part was 10 minus c. The distance over the second part was also 24. The rate over the second part was 10 plus c. Okay, so I could even call this d1, r1, d2, r2. Whoops, I wrote r r, r2. Okay, and again, we know that's equal to 5. So our goal in this problem was to find the speed of the current, so all we need to do at this point is solve for C. Okay, so now we've done, we've almost done the hard part now. Just getting to there, setting up the equation that you have to solve, that's, you know, usually one of the big tedious problems. Um, so let me bring this up here. So it's going to be 24 over 10 minus C plus 24 over 10 plus C equals 5. And what I would do at this point is I would get rid of the 
fractions, if you think about the least common multiple of 10 minus c and 10 plus c, basically if we multiply both sides, um, let me scoot this over a little bit, if we multiply both sides by 10 minus c, 10 plus c, so if I do it to the left, I've got to do it to the right. Um, so got it all squeezed in here a little bit. Let me zoom out here real quick. Um, okay, so when I distribute this to the first part, I'm distributing all of this whole first term. The 10 minus c will cancel out and leave us with 24 times 10 plus c plus 24. When I distribute it to the second part, the 10 plus c will cancel out, and that'll leave me with 10 minus c. On the right side, we have 5. If I FOIL this out, I'm going to get 10 times 10, which is 100. Then I'm going to get um, a minus, or excuse me, I'll get a positive 10c, but then a negative 10c. That'll cancel out, and then I'll be left with minus c squared. Okay, so on the left side, 24 times 10 is 240 plus 24c, and then I'll get 240 minus 24c on the left side of my equal sign. On the right side, we'll get 500 minus 5c squared. So this is now a quadratic equation. Um, I have a c squared term, um, and I have a c to the first, which we don't have to have. Likewise, we have a number, which we don't have to have. But this c squared tells me it's a quadratic. And quadratics, you try to set equal to 0 and cancel, or factor. Um, so 240 and 240, well, that's 480. Notice the positive 24c and the negative 24c will cancel out. On the right side, I still have 500 minus 5c squared. Well, if I subtract 500 from both sides, I'm going to get negative 20 equals negative 5 c squared. So we're getting pretty close. Again, we're just trying to solve for c because that's the current. If I divide both sides by negative 5, by negative 5, on the left side we'll get positive 4 equals c squared. And if I take the square root of both sides, remember that's how we get rid of squares, I'll get positive negative 2 equals c. But again, in this situation, C represents the current or the speed, and we don't have negative speeds. So that tells us that, hey, the current of this stream or river or whatever it is, is 2 miles per hour. All right, I hope this video helps. If you have any questions or comments, please post them on the comments page um, that go with this video.